made like 20 of these and they originally took me a lot of time and they really suck and uh but they turn out cool and uh the ladies love them so the first thing i'm going to show you is how i make my stencils Sten making large stencils and woodworking is huge um there's so many things that require a stencil uh, whether you're doing signs or uh i don't know i have a billion things just around the shop that i use the stencil for so i'm going to show you how i do that all right so prior to actually getting on the computer making a stencil printing it out you want to know how big it needs to be so you got your piece here this is what i'm doing it on um i think that that could probably work but i want to go for something a little smaller this is probably gonna be the smallest one i've ever done the bigger it is, actually the easier it is. The small ones kind of get real clustered and bunched up and it's kind of hard to work. But we're gonna try it out. All right, so here's my stencil, open in Microsoft Paint, going old school. There's two things I wanna note about this, or uh, you know, a couple things I wanna note about this. Um, first off, it's cursive. You wanna do cursive. Um, you can see that there's actually gonna be three elements here. There's gonna be the H, the E, I, N, L, and E, and then also the dot. Uh, if you want to go regular, it's just going to take more time. Um, it's easy to get, if they're all connected, it's easy to, uh, you know, it's faster. You can see right here between the E and the I, uh, that area right there is actually pretty thin. I, I actually made this bold. I wanted to, uh, you know, the, the wider it is, the easier it's going to be. If you pick something with thin lines, it's going to be hard to nail and it might turn out crappy. I don't know. I'd try to go more on the bold side if I were you. I got this font from defont.com. They got like thousands of uh, fonts on there to choose from. Um, so I'll link that in the description below, but uh, yeah. And to save ink, I never print my fonts in black. I will change them to a super light color and, uh, and then I'll print them that way. So after I got it all set up, I got the, the borders right up onto the font. And I'm gonna go up to print and then do page setup instead of print. So here, um, I don't know, hopefully you guys can see it. Uh, since I wanted the portrait orientation, uh, I set it to portrait. I got my margins to 0.5, half an inch. Um, I'm centering it horizontal and vertically, so whenever I center it on my piece, I know it's gonna actually be in the right spot. And this is the trick to uh, making a large stencil. As you say, instead of adjust to 100% normal size or whatever it usually prints, Press fit to, and then three by one pages. Three is gonna be your X axis, so that's gonna be your run, and uh, the one is gonna be your rise or your Y axis. So I'm gonna do three across, one tall. Uh, if I wanted it too tall, you just put a two in there, yeah, you get the idea. All right, so press that okay. Once you have those printed off, this is basically what you've got. Uh, one stencil on three pages. All you gotta do is take a half inch off this side, a half inch off this side, and then overlap them, and then you got one big stencil. I use double-sided tape, uh, you can use painter, it doesn't have to be double-sided. But, there you go, one big stencil. All right, so we bring the stencil over to the piece. That looks good. And I'm gonna put some painter's tape around it so it doesn't move around. So in the past, I've used like screws and stuff, like uh, and nails with big heads and that looks okay but over the years i've uh, come to prefer these panel nails which are i use one and five eighth inch long so that way i can go like five eighths into the wood and still have like an inch above the wood time to start setting some nails i got my like 100 year old hammer my good one is in my car right now and i don't feel like going to get it all right i like to work left to right uh, so that way if i put a nail here um, I like to hold nails with this hand and the hammer with this hand uh, that nail would be in the if that there was a nail there It would be in the way of putting a nail here. So this wood is actually 5 8 inch thick and I know the nails are 1 and 5 8 so if I'm sticking up an inch that means that it's about to come out the back and it can come out the back a little but my nails right at an inch uh, Exactly where I want it. I think a lot of people overthink the fact that you have to get all the nails perfect and that's really not the case you really can't tell at the end and once you get all the string on you'll be able to see nails that are sticking up higher than other nails and afterwards you can go down and beat them all flat um, and flush with each other I'm just gonna start working around and if they kind of get out of line you can just bend them back 
so the smaller it is, the harder it is because you know you got tighter curves. And on tighter curve, if you want that curve to turn out well, you really have to put nails like right up on each other. Like these are a half inch. Uh, typically, if it was a bigger piece, I'd be doing like every inch. Uh, but you know, since this is small, if I don't do a lot of nails, it's it's gonna look kind of crappy and it's gonna look kind of squared off. I'm not gonna get that nice rounded curve. I want to also note that uh, since this is a small stencil, I'm going to be going on the outside of the line to make it a little more bolder. Uh, and that's going to help me out when I start stringing. So you can already kind of see here, um, since this is a longer curve, I have them spaced out wider, probably five eighths to three quarters. And then as it comes up here, I have it as little as three eighths because that's a really tight curve inside there. On the long straights, I'll probably do like three quarter to an inch. Uh, just because it really doesn't need them right next to each other. If you start stringing it later and it's just not working out for you, um, you can always kind of bend these nails around and there's quite a bit of room for error. I'm gonna look for any that are a lot higher than the other ones. These all look pretty good. Won't really be able to tell until I get the string around it. So this is how I do the nailing portion. Um, no pre-drilling, nothing like that. I make sure, I do, always do mine in cedar, uh, just cause it's easier to nail. And um, I'm gonna do the rest of the word and check back in in about a half hour, if I'm lucky. <laughs> Okay, just for reference, that was uh, one of these boxes is 176. So that was like about 225 nails. If you wanna pause it right here, uh, before I take the stencil off, you can kind of see where I put nails, uh, where I put more nails, where I put less nails. Uh, that should clear up any questions. Okay, that's trash. Alrighty. Under a lot of these things, you're gonna have paper that didn't quite uh, come out with the rest of it. So you're just gonna have to sit here with the tweezers or something and pick that out. So I'm just gonna be showing you guys how to do this letter H. Uh, you can pretty much figure it out once you understand how this one's done, you'll be able to do the rest of them. Um, I am gonna use one piece of string for the H, one for uh, this portion, and then one for the dot. I like to use one string for each piece instead of doing an outline and then cutting it. And Because the less knots you have, uh, the less likely it is going to fail someday. I take this string, the end of it, loop it over a wire that I have hanging above me. You can use an eye hook in the ceiling, something like that. And, uh, and I'm just going to throw that yarn ball on the ground. Yarn ball, I don't know what they're called. To start off, I'm going to make a slip knot. So whenever I pull it over that piece, that first piece, just start anywhere, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna pull it over that piece, get it nice and snug. Using my scissors, I'm gonna cut most of that crap off. And then I'm gonna put a little dab of super glue on there to make sure that little frayed ends don't ever uh, kinda undo itself. All right, now we're time to outline. If it's a curve like this, you go around the outside. But then we have to switch over to the inside of this corner, so we bring it to the inside. I always start off with an outline, and I can see that this is gonna curve that way, so I'm gonna bring it up to this piece, and then right before the corner, I'm gonna bring it inside. Wrap that around. Yo, it's. There's a lot of forethought. You kind of have to look what's coming. I know that I'm gonna wrap it around all of these and then on the inside of that corner and then back, oh, it's gonna curve up again. So make sure it stays on the ground. Outside, bring it around the inside. And we've got another curve like this. So we're gonna go on the inside of all these And then we got an outside curve, so we bring it around the outside. 
This kind of sounds confusing, I would assume, but uh, it's really, once you start going, you're gonna realize immediately where you need to cross over and where you shouldn't cross over because it's not gonna work out very well. Uh, if you, There's only really only one way you can do it. Uh, your letters are gonna turn out blocky if not, and you'll see that immediately, so don't be worried that you're gonna screw it up. Um, I'm just saying, once you start doing it, you'll understand what I'm saying. I think all right so we got one outline there make sure all of it's pressed to the ground and then we're gonna do one layer of filler this layer is really important uh, you got to do this really thick you don't want to see much wood under this layer because um, I only fill mine twice and that is the very beginning right now and at the very end just kind of zigzag all over the place cover as much ground as you can and there's really no method other than Crossing it up, crossing it up, crossing it up. Make sure all your pieces stay down while you're trying to do this. Because your outline, your next outline is gonna go on top of this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I didn't even realize it, but I actually missed this whole section of the H. But that's not a big deal. I'm just gonna outline it right now and continue like I did nothing wrong. Yeah, I know you guys caught that before. You guys got eagle eyes. All right, so I got a base layer right there. Everything's pretty well covered, um, or at least good enough in my opinion. And now I am going to go back to the outline and outline it about five more times, four or five more times probably. All right, now that I've outlined it four times, we're gonna make the final filler and that has to look good. Uh, so you gotta do some kind of design or keep it consistent, whatever. Um, you don't really have to worry about you know, filling in the gaps because the base layer should hopefully hide most of the wood for you and you won't, really won't be able to tell. So whether you're doing zigzags or X's or whatever, you know, just try to make some, look, make it look like there's some kind of method to the madness. So I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna skip every other one. And I'm gonna bring it down. Zigzag in every piece. Skip over to this one, do the bottom. And on the tight corners, you might have to go to the same nail twice, and that's okay. Switch over to this side, do a little zigzag in the middle, and we're gonna knock out the bottom here. Skipping every other one, get to the bottom. And then we are gonna go cross them up and do X's. 
So now we got that filler in, and what we're gonna do is outline it one last time. As far up as it can go. And boom. All right, so now we're back to where we started. I'm going to cut a little section off of there. And I'm gonna do another slip knot. Without this whole thing falling apart. Keep pressure on it. I also wanna mention I'm using yarn and not string. This is basically the thickest yarn I can find because the thicker it is, the more it's gonna cover and that means the less time it's gonna take. So I got a slip knot and I'm just gonna stretch it to one of the far nails and then tighten that knot. All right, very good. Then I'll go back and kind of evenly stretch it around it. All right, so I'm gonna cut that yarn off. Uh, cut a little closer than that. You don't want the fuzzies. Don't want the fuzzies. Don't want the fuzzies. All right, put a little dab of super glue on there so that it doesn't uh, start unraveling. All right, so that's basically how you do string art. Uh, the rest is the same way. You outline, and then you fill, and then you outline like four times, and then you fill, and then you outline one last time. So at the end, you, you're gonna wanna go back. It's gonna look like crap, probably. Um, you're gonna wanna bring that filler and the top outline basically to the head of the nail, and then uh, get all these uh, other outlines underneath them. You just want to space them out, and once you space them out, it looks pretty good. If there's any that are too tall, like these two right here, just hammer them down flush with the rest of them. All right, one last thing before I go further. You can see that on the E, the E, and the L, uh, basically I chose the skinniest spot, and I chose to go in from there, and basically I'm going to repeat that on every step that I have left. All right, so we're finally done with that painfully awful process, but we have an awesome product to uh, look back on and appreciate. So once again, thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you liked this video, found it helpful, please like and subscribe. I always try to pump out videos when I got some extra time on my hands, and uh, I think that's all I got. So have a good night, guys.